If you've been following me for a while, you know that I am a big fan of the Clone Wars, as is a lot of the LEGO community. While I do feel like we often get excited about new Star Wars releases, we don't appreciate how we got here nearly enough. Part of the reason why I even decided to make this video is because of how many variations there are of clones. There are four distinct eras to examine, and in each period, it demonstrates a wide variation in not only prints, the technology, and also in the physical mold, which has evolved over time. With a new LEGO Star Wars collection, each set sold separately. The inception of Clone Troopers wouldn't be until April of 2002, with the release of 7163 Republic Gunship, and then later re-released in January of 2003 with 4482 ATTE. The printing on these troopers were fairly basic, featuring torso printing on the front and back in order to represent their depiction in Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. In this era, their visors weren't fully printed on and instead featured an exposed slot where the minifigure head can be seen. These clones didn't have any head printing at the time, so the logic was that they would sport a blank head to match the seam of their visors. A very odd design choice, because in the same era, Jango Fett in Jango Fett Slave 1 would feature the same exposed visor but in a rendition similar to the clone's open visor in the Mandalorian style, with the jetpack combined into the assembly. This oversight wouldn't be the only noteworthy mistake, but the fact that the animated Clone Wars TV show from 2004 featured several colored clones like Fordo and Alpha Squad. We wouldn't be completely done with the open face visors as the next iteration of the Phase 2 clone troopers would also feature the same open faced visors. These clones shared a similar body template to the original Phase 1 troopers. However, they appeared in different insignia from Shock, Starcore, 442nd, and 91st. They would all appear in different waves from May of 2005 up until late 2008, where the open face visor would be discontinued officially to make way for new Star Wars media. Phase 1 clone troopers were going to need a drastic overhaul from their predecessor. It wouldn't be until August of 2008 that Lucasfilms would release the hit Star Wars property, Star Wars The Clone Wars. These days we tend to underestimate the importance of this film and its spin-off media. The entirety of the LEGO Star Wars lineup was dedicated to the Clone Wars as its sole focus. In whole, this was due to the Clone Wars being the only active piece of Star Wars media at the time. Leading up to the launch of the 2008 Clone Wars, we would receive a pre-launch of sets in January of that same year, none of which featured clones in the new animated style. It wouldn't be until July of 2008 that we would see the new style of clones emerge in the V-19 Torrent, ATTE Walker, Republic Gunship, Republic Fighter Tank, and Separatist Spider Droid. The clones featured in the initial Clone Wars wave would be plain Phase 1 troopers in troves, as well as the first release of Commander Fox and Commander Cody. These clones were fitted with bolder and deeper lines to fit in with their CGI animated counterpart. This would also be the first time that we would see clone troopers retrofitted with visor holes to attach accessories. A major concern at the time for fans, however, was the nougat flesh tones for clone troopers, which should have really been a more tan appearance. The details on the faces would be a bit much. Nonetheless, they were the first generation of clones to actually have face prints. At the time, the only unique face print was Captain Rex, 
which featured a 5 o'clock shadow. The portfolio of Clone Trooper customizations would expand even further with the parts packs included in playsets. These parts packs would include a newly molded rangefinder, flashlight, and antenna as well as the release of the first plastic pauldron and camas. In short, these are accessories appearing on clone troopers who held different ranks of authority. They were also pretty crucial to dressing the minifigures correctly, even if the colors weren't the most accurate, being limited to light bluish gray and black. Captain Rex would also debut in the Comic-Con exclusive set in July of 2008. However, he would later reappear in the launch of the 2009 wave of Clone Wars sets. In January of 2009, we would continue to see the same animated Phase 1 clone troopers in a multitude of sets. The Clone Walker Battle Pack, Corporate Alliance Tank, Venator, as well as the coveted ATOT and Dropship. Noteworthy developments would include a new variant of Phase 1 Clone Trooper Gunners and a new element that would be a white colored jetpack. With the proven success of the Clone Wars, we would see more unique Clone Troopers appearing in the ARC-170 Starfighter, Emperor Palpatine Shuttle, and an odd Anniversary Edition Swamp Speeder which included a classic Phase 2 Clone Trooper from 2006. The ARC-170 and Palpatine Shuttle would include clone pilots from before and after Order 66. Both sporting a newly designed clone pilot helmet with an open-faced visor as well as new face prints. 2010 would be yet another major release of Clone War sets featuring a new Clone Trooper Battle Pack, the Republic Frigate, and the Battle for Geonosis. The Clone Trooper Battle Pack preserved the animated look. However, we would see the inclusion of Bomb Squad Troopers, Horn Company, and a specially molded ARF Trooper named Razor. Apart from the ARF, this would be the first ever clone troopers to feature leg printing. Previous generations of clone troopers did not feature any sort of detail on the lower body. Going with this development, Wolf and his Wolfpack squad mate would appear with special detailing on their legs with a base coat of the coveted sand blue. 2012 would be a pretty minor year for the inclusion of clones. Most of the sets from this year focused on the original trilogy which was understandable because it seemed like the Star Wars portfolio was fatigued by too many Clone Wars releases. A third year of Clone Wars Battle Packs would reappear with the Elite Clone Trooper Battle Pack and the Geonosian Cannon. The Cannon would feature a Phase 1 appearance of Commander Gree, which also appears to have leg printing. Of the main commanders featured throughout the Clone Wars, Gree and Wolf would be the only to be equipped with leg printing. The Elite Clone Trooper Battle Pack included Arc Hammer, however his name was omitted from the box art and simply titled Clone Arc Trooper. A reappearance of the Arf Trooper would also be included with the Rancor Battalion insignia. Oddly, the Arc Trooper wouldn't receive any unique head and was instead reverted back to the default black head that appeared in the early waves from the first generation of clones. 2008 to 2012 were my favorite years of Clone Wars sets, and apart from the fact that I grew up on these sets, it was the same years that we would see major developments in helmet molds, accessories, and the printing would have major advancements. A lot of people aren't really fans of the thick lines and excess details, but I really love the design of these clones. News from LEGO Star Wars! The Clone Wars have begun, and the Jedi need help! You can fill the ATTE, load the missiles and the clones, and head into battle against Jango Fett and the Droid Army! With the ATTE, victory is in your hands! News from LEGO Star Wars! Each set sold separately! 2013 would mark the release of Season 5 of The Clone Wars, making way for the last full run of Clone Wars sets. The design language of clones would change yet again, as the need for Phase 2 troopers were growing at the conclusion of Season 5. LEGO would adopt yet another helmet mold upon releasing the Z95 Headhunter, Bark Speeder, Umbaran MHC, and ATRT. 501st Clone Troopers and Captain Rex would be updated with new armor prints, cloth pauldrons, and kamas as well. The use of hard kama and pauldron accessories were discontinued. Phase 2 shock troopers, 332nd, 212th, Wolfpack, and Phase 1 clone infantry would receive sharp refreshes throughout the span of 2013 to 2014. The inclusion of new pilots, lieutenants, sergeants, and captains would be the most interesting of these Phase 1 refreshes. Newly molded airborne helmets would debut in the 212th and Geonosis battle packs. 
it can be hard to differentiate the design language of Phase 1 from Phase 2 Troopers because it seems like LEGO had different source material in mind for both continuations. Phase 1 Troopers were molded closely after the episodic franchise with more skeuomorphic perspectives in mind. The shadowing and cell shading would be the most telling on the chest plate, while the helmets preserved a subtle shine towards the center of the visor. Phase 2 Troopers, on the other hand, appear to mimic a more precise and geometric lossless detail that's more akin to the computer animations from CW. New LEGO Star Wars Rogue One sets. The Empire is taking over the galaxy. You can build the Rebel U-Wing fighter to stop them. Blow the troops and soar into battle. Great shots! Look out for Krennic's Imperial Shuttle. Under right hands, you can build and test these vehicles inside the LEGO Force Builder app. Ask your parents first. New LEGO Star Wars Rogue One sets, each sold separately. The well for Star Wars content would run dry after the abrupt end to the Clone Wars TV show, and there would be a hiatus in product development of new clone troopers. Sadly, the only noteworthy Star Wars sets to appear would be the Jedi and Clone Trooper Battle Pack, which featured a slight variation in the lower body printing, and an AT-AP Walker with Kashyyyk Troopers. The lack of development in sets with Clone Troopers was due to the closure of the Clone Wars TV show and the Disney Star Wars acquisition, launching Star Wars into a new era of mainline films with The Force Awakens. 2020 would be a renaissance for Clone Wars content, both in Star Wars media and in LEGO product development. Clone Wars would unexpectedly receive a sixth and final season, while LEGO would prepare for the overhaul of the design of the Clone Troopers once more. The 2020 redesign has been the most contentiously debated topic amongst fans of LEGO Star Wars. LEGO ditching their already perfected skeuomorphic and angular design language developed in 2015 in favor of flat design aesthetics would prove controversial to many. Nonetheless, the launch of the 501st Battle Pack in August of 2020 would prove to be a major feat in getting in tune once more with their fans. Post-2020, we would receive numerous launches leading up to the present day with the inclusion of 212th, 187th, 501st Specialists, Shock, and 332nd Troopers. Phase 1 Troopers would receive the same treatment in the one and only Clone Wars Blister Pack, which featured a yellow captain and plain colored troopers following flat design. The most controversial design overhaul was the inclusion of visor holes in Phase 2 Clone Troopers. This wouldn't be due to the merit of its utility, but instead the inconsistent and haphazard placement of the holes. It didn't help that in many circumstances, the product renders had the helmet holes placed in the correct spot. With all these aesthetic overhauls, it's hard to say when LEGO's design language will change once again. Either way, the Clone Wars is the most impressive and longest recursively running theme to grace LEGO Star Wars. While I do believe that there is some merit to changing the template every couple of years, it's beginning to become a little too frequent that it feels like collectors can't catch up with the past year's designs. It really dates the collections into different periods sometimes even mismatching the aesthetic appeal of minifigures. I, and many other fans, hope that LEGO treats the Clone Wars IP as a form of evergreen products that they should consider to make room for in the production lineup at least once every year. Considering how highly influential and successful the source material was, many fans have been biting their nails waiting for their favorite battalion, Clone Wars scene, or vehicle to appear in the next wave. It's time for LEGO to start giving fans more of what they're passionate about rather than succumbing to the massive amount of filler and strategically backwards releases that have been plaguing the theme in recent years.